Marketing Overwhelm. Today, I'm joined by Emily Cadell. She's the Director of Marketing for Biz Marketing, and we are going to have a conversation about marketing overwhelm for small businesses. Emily, thanks for joining me today. Absolutely. Let's get started. Yeah. So I think, you know, a lot of small businesses feel very burdened by the feeling of overwhelm. There's so many platforms out there. There's so much to do when it comes to online marketing. So what do I do? If I don't know where to start, I feel completely lost. And I think a lot of small businesses feel like, oh, I need to be doing these cool new platforms that are coming out. I need to do TikTok. I need to do threads. I need to do all of these. But if they're not doing it well, then it's not working. So Mm. Marketing mm-hmm. overwhelm kind of feels like, okay, well, I need to do all of these things and I feel so swamped and burdened by it, but I don't have the time and money to do all of these. So so you get paralyzed. Are there any other things that you see businesses trying to do that is contributing to this overwhelm? Yeah. I mean, I think they're, like you said, either I'm not going to do anything or I'm going to try to do it all and the business owner is trying to do it and obviously does not have time to be keeping up with a consistent marketing strategy on these like especially social media platforms that are so quick moving they don't have time to do it so they're like oh i'm going to open all these accounts on all of these different platforms going to do it for a couple weeks and then i just fall off. Where are we going to get started? First step, what kind of business are you? Where's your target market hanging out? There's so Mm. many, especially when we're talking about service businesses, like I think of roofers, I think of, yeah, like you said, home remodel, that target audience is going to be on Facebook. That's where they're going to be. And that's the easiest place to do it to reach those people, you know, the younger, slightly younger generation, but also old enough to still probably buy your services is going to be on Instagram. Then it's great for B2B type of businesses. So you just need to assess what kind of business you have and where that target audience is going to be. And Mm. we really, we try to focus on, you know, kind of the top five, I would say, obviously, your website is very important. You know, beyond that, We really like to focus on Google business profile that needs to be up to date. It needs to be accurate. You can post uh, updates on it. It's very important. This uh, was formerly known as Google My Business, just in case you're confused there. Two is Facebook. Three is Instagram. Four is LinkedIn. Five is email. And each platform has different perks. So that's kind of where to get started. I would sort of add one. Mm-hmm. To the list, people don't necessarily think about it as your own website because really that's the only platform you can control mm-hmm. 100%. So this exactly. the conversation today assumes that you are uh, optimizing your website already. You've got um, articles on there that are getting added mm-hmm. and that sort of thing. So we're sort of assuming that that's a baseline and that may not be a good assumption, but we can't forget about your website. The good news exactly. is that all of this stuff we're doing uh, whatever platform we select, we're going to be able to reuse um, information, you know, in different forms mm-hmm. for the different platforms. So, yeah, let's talk about Google Business Profile. That That's kind of like the number one thing that you got to mm-hmm. start with outside of your website, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this actually this makes me think of my son's dentist does not have a Google Business Profile for some odd reason. I don't know, but it's really hard to find like, oh, I need to look them up to call them about this. Or I went to, I was going to go leave them a review because they've been a great dentist and they don't have a Google business profile. It makes no sense. They have a website, they have all of that, but that is a massive flaw. That's a big, that's a big deal to not have a Google business profile. So this is very important. We really work to optimize it, make sure everything is correct on there. You know, your hours, your reviews are so important and Google reviews are just huge. People are going to Google you right. before they use you. They want to see what reviews you have on there. Uh, it's very, you know, it's important for your visibility. I mean, what else do you think about Google Business Profile? I mean, Google Business and Profile, A, it feeds Google Maps. So if you have a brick and yeah. mortar location, you absolutely mm-hmm. have to be on Google Business Profiles. If somebody is going to Google you and mm-hmm. try to drive to your location, yeah. <laughs> uh, there, uh, it's going to be a lot harder if you're not, uh, if you don't have a Google Business Profile, A, because that's what drives Google Maps. And mm-hmm. Google Maps is the predominant mapping software. I know Apple Maps 
is important as well. And I believe they use data gathered from Yelp mm -hmm. for local stuff. But going back to Google Business Profile, A, it powers maps. B, Google Business Profile is what shows up on the search results page in what we call the three pack or the local listing. So when you're looking at search results on Google, you'll mm -hmm. see three or four in some cases locations when you search for type of business and a location. Dentist near me, for example, right? You're going to see that yeah. or dentist for kids near me. And so you're going to see that show up. That generates a lot of visibility for businesses and it's essentially free. I mean, you're going to have to take the time to set it up. Mm -hmm. But that one and with the Google reviews that appear there, that's where your Google reviews appear. Honestly, today, I would argue it is the most important place for every single business. You have mm -hmm. to have a Google business profile. In fact, uh, we should call that Dennis and see if they need some help. I know. <laughs> Honestly. So yeah, next yep. up, Facebook. Obviously, Facebook still has that big service area. Target audience, like I talked about, I mean, kind of the age range of like 40 to 70 homeowners, like that age range, that audience is going to be on Facebook. Um, so it's really a great way to connect with customers. You can engage with them really well. They can message you. Uh, you can do all kinds of stuff like that. I mean, the cost effective marketing, that's even, it's pretty solid on cost. We've seen for our own customers, but even just the like organic side of it, of being able yeah. to get reviews, being able to showcase your business you, through visual yeah, and through, text. What, what, what I don't get is about Facebook is this. Folks are saying, well, I, I don't use Facebook anymore. Well, you know what? I think you're lying because yeah. I can't believe how many people I see on Facebook. There's a ton of people still using Facebook, oh, especially yeah. for like, I use Facebook constantly for some groups that I'm a member of. I'm not really interested in, you know, seeing whose birthday it is right. and that sort of thing. But I definitely use it for some groups that I am part of for fishing. And, you know, these groups are like, you know, 1,200, you know, 2,000, 3,000 people constantly updating stuff with something I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm checking that out sometimes during the fishing season, checking it out like twice a day, three times a day. Right. Oh, yeah. So, so I mean, that again, I completely agree. There's just everyone is still on Facebook, like unless you're maybe like 25 and below oh. or some people have decided to go away from it. But most people are still on Facebook. If, so. Yeah. Especially if you are trying to sell something that is requires a certain level of income. And generally, mm -hmm. that's going to be people that are probably in their early 30s and older. Tied to that, of course, is Instagram, mm -hmm. which is owned by Facebook. What is it that you like about Instagram for businesses and what particular types of businesses do you think can really do well on Instagram? Obviously, it's a very visual. You have to have a like picture or a video or something to upload to post on Instagram. A little bit different than Facebook, but very visual, very easy for home remodeling, pet groomers, anything having to do with pets is going to do amazing on Instagram. Any kind of visual, I mean, even like roofers can do well on sure. there. Any kind of home service that you can really highlight visually. Remodeling. Pleasing, remodeling. But then I think even, you know, some healthcare stuff can do well on there too. And I really like, obviously, again, it is owned by Facebook, aka Meta. So you can go on and you can post uh, at the same time. So why wouldn't you? Like you can post on Instagram and Facebook at the same time, either using the like meta dashboard or if you're posting from the like Instagram app, you can also share to Facebook. Makes it easy. Uh, again, it is maybe a slightly younger audience. Like you are going to get the younger side, but you also will still get a lot of that audience that's mm -hmm. also on Facebook. They've kind of also moved over to Instagram. So you're going to get a lot of people who are available to buy your services or your products. Obviously, again, I know we really focus on service area businesses, less with product focused businesses, but products, of course, are going to do very well on Instagram. But services can do right. pretty great. We should make a distinction here between Facebook and Instagram organic mm -hmm. posting and Facebook and Instagram advertising and then boosting, right? Mm -hmm. So there's kind of three things you can do here. You can create a post and just post it organically. 
Mm-hmm. And it's going to go out to your audience. Hopefully, some people that are following you may see it. Not guaranteed, though, on these platforms, which is why they are in business because they take advertising dollars. So there's a second thing where you can boost a post. What do you think about that in terms of like a business? That mm-hmm. to me, it seems like kind of the first step of dipping your toe into advertising. Maybe I think it's a little easier for businesses to do themselves uh to boost a post that maybe you're like this post is doing pretty well i'm gonna boost it or like boost a post about maybe you have an event going on or something like that those Mm -hmm. can do pretty well um i would caution against putting a lot of money into boosting posts because they're not they're not necessarily going to they're going to get your brand out there and it's good for branding it's not necessarily going to get you leads yeah it's not uh, they don't it, they don't run long enough to get mm-hmm. optimized and they're not going to necessarily like have a button for someone to go to your website or whatever um, right kind of thing but then it's worth it maybe a little bit for branding so yeah i would say yeah. a small budget worth trying it dipping your toe in the water and seeing if it works and then of course you've got advertising so the nice thing about meta facebook and instagram is that you've got a ton of different options Mm -hmm. for advertising the the thing that a lot of people don't understand is that we can target audiences by geography Mm -hmm. which which even folks don't understand but if you have a a business in a certain area and you know you're not going to get a customer from 20 miles away you you're not going to don't waste your money yeah, putting your ads out there, which I see the default settings in the ads is like 20 miles from your mm-hmm. location, which is like, mm-hmm. what? Here oh, yeah. where we live, where I live in Seattle, it's like, oh, it, it went across the water and it's on the it's on a uh, peninsula on the other side of the island or on the other side of the water. Right. <laughs> People have to take a ferry. Same thing happens in like Long Island or Connecticut. Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of places like that so you have to really be careful but the cool thing is with the advertising if you're using those platforms for advertising it's a consolidated view and you're able to Mm -hmm. advertise through the platform and then it'll automatically optimize you know the results for what you're looking for and you can target it geographically and there's other targeting as well we don't necessarily need to get into that now but right. there's there are other types of things you can do like retargeting so mm-hmm. somebody goes to your website plant a pixel on their browser and the next time they go on to instagram or facebook they'll see your ads i know you've all exactly. seen this before right oh yeah <laughs> uh, or um you can upload an audience if you've got a bunch of customers and you're trying to re-engage your customers you can upload a list assuming you have their permission to market to them Mm -hmm. their email addresses facebook will go in and match the email addresses that you load with the users on facebook and then show those ads specifically to that audience custom audience is what they call that so that's facebook instagram google business profile and then we've got linkedin what do you think about linkedin who's that good for yeah so obviously this is a little bit different of a site than instagram and facebook professionals other businesses are going to be on there so it's really good for b2b type of businesses like it's great for us for like a marketing company but Mm -hmm. it's really good for lawyers that kind of professional services i would say cpas Uh, cpas like anything like that consultants Uh, yeah exactly i would recommend linkedin and i don't think every business needs to really focus on LinkedIn, but I do think those kind of businesses can do well. Yeah, like a dental that. practice, unless they're looking to hire and that, I mean, it's, it's, exactly. a, it's free to get a profile. You might as well grab your profile, but yeah, but you don't need to worry about keeping up with posting on there constantly and doing all of that kind of thing. Right. There's two strategies on LinkedIn with respect to users. So you have a mm-hmm. business profile again, that's something else you should get a business profile. And then associated with the business profile, you have people who work for your organization. Mm-hmm. Uh, and generally what they'll do is they'll look at the email address. It's got to be like the same domain name to link the users to your business. So people can say, I work here, and then they can get associated with that business. Mm-hmm. But what's one of the strategies that we've found to be really pretty powerful for LinkedIn is if you post a uh, item on LinkedIn on the business page, people can go in, people who work for the business 
can go in and share the post. That's mm-hmm. one of the cool things about LinkedIn. It's easy to, sh- if you think about it, a lot of us in the professional world have, you know, relatively big networks of people on LinkedIn. I mean, if, mm-hmm. if you've been in the working world for the last 10 or 15 years, you, you have got to probably have a LinkedIn profile. You probably have at least 100 people, if not more. What's cool is you share a post, it gets shared to your connections. Now, it, mm-hmm. it doesn't, you know, there's algorithms and things like that that, you know, we don't know exactly it's going to get shared with everybody. But it's I, from what I've seen, it's pretty consistent um, mm-hmm. that it, things do get shared. So it's a great strategy. So you just post it once and then you just get all the people that work for the business that are, you know, relevant to that post to reshare or repost. And it's super easy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've seen this with one of our law firms that they'll, one of the lawyers will write a post for the law firm. Mm -hmm. We'll go share it on their LinkedIn. And then whatever lawyer wrote that post is going to go share it on their personal. And they have a huge network of people. Uh, So it's been a great way for them to drive traffic to their blog post, way to do things for um, specific businesses. The next platform that you talked about was email. Really overlooked, right? Email is just huge. It's such a perfect way to reach past clients that maybe will use your services again or in a different way or also getting new leads into your email. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And sending them information that has to do with your business like you said blog posts it really builds customer loyalty builds trust it's informational it's intentional it is very worth doing i would almost i would almost move email up the list here and Mm -hmm. after your website and your google business profile i'd almost put email in there as as a a gotta do like mandatory Mm -hmm. and when we say email we're talking about a a couple different strategies that a business can use. So one, one of the most common ones that we work with our customers with, and it's extremely powerful is getting a, at least a monthly newsletter type email out to their client base. So customers or emails, prospects from the past emails that they've collected but most of the people we're talking about are their existing client base or people who have done business with them in the past it's super important to establish that relationship in an ongoing fashion with the customer Mm -hmm. because their needs are going to change over time if you're providing home services maybe they move or mm-hmm. maybe their um, brother moved into a new home that needs some services. Or, you know, there's just any number of permutations of things that can happen in people's lives that may need them to use your services again. Mm-hmm. So even if you do like kitchen remodeling, you know, it would be a great opportunity to share pictures of some of the latest remodels you've done. Right. Uh, and show off your work, which is one of the strategies that we believe in, you know, mm-hmm. show off. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people move and people have a new kitchen that needs to get done. Or like I said earlier, you know, their brother just bought a new house or, and you know, or, you know, it was a house that really needs a new kitchen. <laughs> oh, so yeah. What's really cool about it is you're just showing up in people's inbox once a month, for example, or if you're really on your game, you know, once a week. Even if they just read your name and hit delete, they have read your name and reminded themselves about your business. Yep. You're just putting your name in front of them. Even that is important. To so do, that, so. yeah. So that's, that's what I call that as more of the, like, um, I don't really have a name for that strategy. I mean, that's really just kind of the bread and butter mm-hmm. uh, marketing campaigns that we run, email marketing campaigns we run for our clients. Right. The other thing would be prospect nurturing, where you use some type of, um, as uh, Alan Dibbs calls it, the um, in his book One Page Marketing Plan, the ethical bribe. You offer mm-hmm. the prospective customer something, and in return they give up their uh, email address, and now this is a prospect. This person. Um, has not purchased from you yet. And there's, you know, there's a whole series of 
emails that you can send out to them in an automated fashion. We call that a drip email campaign uh, mm -hmm. using some marketing automation tools to get them. If, 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 if it turns out that, you know, they're in the buying mode, you want to reinforce your brand and do all kinds of things with them, reinforce their needs, reinforce their pain, help them think about that trans, that transformation they're looking for, that aspirational endpoint and how you're going to help them get there. You can do that through a series of uh, emails, which can contain right. anything from a blog post to a video to, you know, any number of things. Oh, yeah. So th those are kind of the two. I, I didn't mean to go off on a tangent there, but I really think it's overlooked. We've been wrapping all of this together for our clients in one big bundle of like, you should be posting content on your blog. Mm -hmm. That content should then be used in an email and yep. on these platforms. And it's, yep. it's so worth it to just have that strategy all in one and very important. So I think we should table the discussion about content creation for mm -hmm. another episode going deep on that. Um, but I think we could just give the Reader's Digest version of that. Sure. Yeah. So we, you know, we'll work with a client of what kind of what kind of topics do you want to talk about this month? We'll usually put out two blog posts that really are great for SEO, local SEO, really hit some topics that we think prospective clients, but also, again, current clients could really be interested in or past clients. And then those get posted to their site, send out an email that will have that information in it and it will all of the buttons and stuff will go back to those blog posts uh, and then we will also post that on their google business profile facebook linkedin instagram whatever kind of platforms that they're using uh and it's just kind of a full circle kind of marketing plan that we're right. going on so yeah and yeah. there's there's a whole host of things we have to do related to that it's mm -hmm. defining the this is straight out of the one page marketing plan yeah. Who's your audience? What's your messaging, your core messaging, your marketing messaging? And then we talk about how we're going to get it out there. And so there's some pre-work that has to happen, which we could cover in another episode. But I yeah. think it's really important to understand that if you, you know, when you decide to commit to marketing on a platform or two or three, that they don't stand alone. You mm -hmm. are looking for complementary assets and squeezing the most juice out of that, um, the work you are doing. Looks like you've set me up for a lightning round here. Yep. So I figure you can ask me what yeah. type of business. Yeah. Uh, yeah. After Google, we're going to skip Google, skip email, yeah. skip the website, but yeah. what other platform should they focus on? And I will tell you. So roofing company. Facebook. Pet groomer. Instagram, definitely. Uh, law firm. LinkedIn. Now I will say, I will throw one caveat there. Mm -hmm. um, in that, when we say law firm, we're talking about different. There are different types of lawyers. So maybe a bankruptcy lawyer mm -hmm. or a personal injury lawyer. You know, personal injury is is a totally different type of. Um, so that's kind of a loaded question there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. And I mean, there's different platforms that specifically lawyers should be on, but that's a whole nother yeah. can of worms. Um, right. But yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. at least. What about uh, pest service company? Facebook. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, HVAC, heating and air. Facebook again. Okay. Auto detailer. We have Instagram. like a. Okay. Okay. Yep. Very visual. Mm -hmm. uh, dentists and other health type professionals. Uh, Facebook. I would do Facebook. Okay. Good. Is there anything else that we ought to cover in this episode? Like I said, we'll, we're going to cover just more of the content in the weeds yeah. in an upcoming episode because I think there's a lot to cover. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you want to add before we sign off for today? Uh, yeah, I would just say, you know, don't feel the burden. Don't feel FOMO about all of these platforms like we talked about. Stick to what you know. Stick to what you can be consistent in. And if you need help, we're here to help. So 
if you were a business owner, what is the minimum what what what's the minimum commitment that you should make to a let's say that you've decided you're obviously you got your Google business profile figured out. Mm-hmm. You've decided we're going to do Instagram. What what's the minimum commitment that any business should make if they are going to look for some results from a particular platform? Sure. I would post at least 10 times a month. If you can do that, that'll, that will get you headed. Towards so the right two and a half times a week, basically yeah. is what you're saying. So some yeah. weeks are going to be three, some weeks will be two. That's good. Okay. That's good to know. So if you've heard this conversation, you're still not sure where to start. You'd like to have a conversation with us. If you go to our website, bizmktg.com, bizmarketing.com, you can book an appointment with us and we will, for free, and we will discuss your needs and give you some ideas of what you could do. And also, if you're looking for help, obviously we're here to help as well. That's uh, what we do. That's our, um, that's a reason we're in business is to help businesses win online, go online and, uh, go to our website, book an appointment. There's a big red button there. Just click the button. Let us know. You could also just send an email to podcast at bizmktg.com. Emily, thanks. Thank thanks you. for the day. It's a great conversation. Absolutely. Thanks for listening to this episode of Biz and Life Done Well with Peter Wilson. You can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and most of the other popular podcast platforms. Please tell your friends about us and leave us a review so even more people will find out about us. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.